I now invite uh, Marius Raikeras, a Norwegian human rights lawyer who's just filed a petition uh, in the Human Rights Court in Geneva uh, and who has been a very long-standing friend of uh, uh, families that have been asking for justice against child removal, uh, particularly in Norway, which has one of the most uh, vicious uh, child removal uh, agencies uh, anywhere in the world. Over to you, Marius. Good to see you again. Um, one year ago, time flies. Um, I have um, some thoughts about what's been in the aftermath of the movie. Uh, sadly, not a positive um, message from Norway because I feel I've been litigating a few cases in Norway since uh, Mrs. Strategy, and I feel that the system um is upset with us they want to have revenge because they don't like either the movie or the judgments all the judgments from the european court saying that norway is a systematic violator <clears throat> so uh, basically uh and um what really provoked me a few weeks ago was that the ministry of norway was so happy that now they wanted to trade with India on a zero-free toll zone, uh, and that the relationship between India and Norway was like super, and that the companies in Norway were invited to come to India for, like, for all good reasons, and 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 that really provoked me because I believe that in order, if we're gonna have any improvement in our own country, we have to start to you know, face not only legal battles against the government of Norway, but also try to, you know, to attack the, the economy in a way, because um, the way I feel it is that the movie, as well as the judgment from the European court, that's my personal opinion, of course, but I do believe I have some right about that, but they have actually made it worse for families in Norway. Let's say that I represented a father in October last year, who is a perfectly fine father. They managed to flee to uh, Poland. Uh, the mother, however, she uh, decided to go back with the ch child and return it to the, to the Child Welfare Services in Norway. And when the court case was pending in the system, the judge was actually attacking me for the judgment in the European court, and she was, and this is right. She was also accusing us for Mrs. Strategy versus Norway, that that was like a propaganda, it was not true, blah, 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 all these things. And the whole story, it was like more a battle between me and the judge, not <laughs> this poor father. But it ended that this poor father got only four visitation rights per year, to uh, each time two hours. So that makes up an eight hours per year to see his son, who is now four, four years old. So my, my, my personal experiences is that everything is based on like re revenge from the system. So um, things are not getting better in Norway, rather the opposite. Um, a lot of people are still struggling with the system. And for me, it seems like um, the only way to, um, to address these things, if we're going to remedy these violations going on in Norway, um is obviously by uh, other means i mean because they don't listen to the they don't listen to the european courts they don't listen to the movie and um and and sadly even though the movie has been like a success internationally it seems like the norwegian authorities they don't you know they don't care at all so that's my that, that's my feeling a year after and i'm not surprised because i've seen this arrogancy so for so many so many years but but sadly that attacks that still you know attacks families in norway immigrant families also so we don't really see improvement in the system and that's uh that's something we have to um to be aware of and to debate so i would love to um and and of course no apology from the uh norwegian government to sagarita no uh no initiative to f for a monetary compensation for what they did. I mean, there is total lack of any responsibility from the from the people in charge. So when we have a system that is so arrogant and so obstructive to justice, I don't see any other alternatives to try to hit Norway with the, what they do for other countries, like boycotting Norwegian companies and so on. So. I think that's the only language they really understand. So 
I'm trying to address that to some other countries uh, that have been involved with uh, illegal adoptions. Like, uh, but um, as long as money talks, it seems difficult. But um, I do hope that uh, we can uh, at least we can discuss the matter in a more sanctional way that we can sanction Norway somehow. That would be that maybe would be a language to understand. And I'm I'm also very upset that they have not made any apology to Sagarita or the Indian community about uh, even after the movie and and the uh, and the ambassador's propaganda you remember we were there in the at the at the Norwegian embassy it continues to deliver in a way that most people believe in so we still have a job to do um and um basically the that's 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 my message from Norway that things are still not working anyway better than it should so um so any suggestions how we can uh, hit norway uh, when they are committing these atrocities to families but because that's what they're do, still doing it's um uh, it's um it would be wonderful yeah but the thing is that uh it's so it's kind of like fascinating to see how arrogant a system can be how much international criticism the system has received it. And they still think that Norway is number one when it comes to child welfare. So, you know, no matter how, what kind of criticism they receive, they just blow, they, they blow it away and, uh, and they attack the human rights defenders in Norway. And that's also a major problem in Norway that many people are not aware of, that the few people who are trying to stand up, uh, a lot of them are receiving, you know, uh, harsh treatment from the government. I, I, one of my friends who is 71 years old, he has done a tremendous job helping families in Norway. He just got sentenced to six months prison because he helped the family to flee to Poland. So the, the system is, 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 is insane and it's, it's so evil that it's, it's even hard for me after so many years to, uh, to realize how evil it is, but, but it, it really is. And um, yeah, we got to keep on fighting, but I look for my, my, my suggestion is to go after the money because that's a language Norway understands. And if we can sanction Norway somehow, I think that would be the best way to to continue to um, to fight this evil system because it really is an evil system and it hasn't improved a single thing after the, all these judgments or the movie. Even though the movie was amazing, people don't understand the movie. You know, I try to tell normal people that this movie has a lot of realistic features in it, but they say that it cannot be this way in Norway because Norway is... A, so the, the the propaganda really works in Norway in a way that the government is doing a good job to brainwash the people. 